Hello everybody, Greg Ficklin here. I just want to make a quick video that better illustrates uh, the configuration of the sling and how to put it on. Uh, my, other, my other sling uh, video I uh, made some time ago uh, really just shows you how fast you should be able to put it on. Uh, but I want to take a little bit of time uh, to show you how this configuration looks on the rifle and how to actually put it on uh, uh, with proper sling discipline. Uh, as, you're, uh, as you're called to the line, you, I want you, to, you, know, you need to be on your knees, uh, grab your rifle, put the rifle in the fold of your right hip and take the right arm and hold the rifle so that you have two hands free to manipulate the sling. Now I'm sitting in a chair, but it, it forms the same lap that I would have had if I was on my knees. So uh, the first thing we want to do is unpin this dog from the short end and hook it right back to itself making a tiny loop that will not fit through the lower sling swivel. Once you do that it will slide all the way until it stops. This gives us enough room to work with our sling. Now if you'll see my sling, this is a Ron Brown sling, it's very high quality uh, and I have this one in the third set of holes. I recommend that you get a sling that is at least 54 inches long. Uh, this will come in handy if you want to use it on an AR-15. Uh, the sling used for an M1 possibly be two inches shorter, but uh, do yourself a break, give yourself a break, buy a 54 inch sling. Now, uh, let's put the sling on our arm. You'll notice that my keepers and the dog always stay together. That's very important. And we're going to take our hand, come around here, we're going to grab those keepers, and I'm going to pull down to make that loop large. I mean, make it big. Make that thing big enough to get your big old arm and coat through there. Now, before we do, we've got to look down and look clockwise and make a half a turn and hold it open with this hand that's free. We're going to stick our arm through there, all the way up to the armpit, and clamp it down to hold it there. Now, what I like to do, uh, okay, I'm, I'm gonna illustrate now where the mistake that people make, and that is by sliding the keepers. Do not do this. But this is what they do. They grab the two keepers, and they slide it down against their arm, and you see a lot of this going on to get that thing in there tight. Don't do that, you don't have to do it. This, this, leaves the key, this leaves the dog stranded up here and it's no, no use to you in keeping the sling in place. What happens when you do it like this is that feels fine at first, but as the string goes on, it does a number like that. And you've got this little triangle of air that allows that sling to eventually run down and it's a, way down here against your elbow and now your position is drooping because the length has changed. So we want to avoid that. So let's put our sling back where it goes. I take it all the way up to my armpit. It's gonna settle out right in the middle of the, of the bicep or usually right above the bicep. Uh, but instead of sliding our keepers down, I wanna keep the keeper and dog together. And to do that, what I have to do is Get a little bit of slack up here, take this left hand and pinch it against that sling swivel. So now I can work this slack down, keeping everything together. And what I do is I'll grab it with these, these two fingers and this pinky. I'll put my pinky behind the dog and grab the two keepers with my thumb and, and two middle fingers and slide all of it down till it gets to my arm. Now, that's close to my arm, but it's not tight yet. We want it to be we want it to be loose enough so that we can roll it around to the top of the arm. Roll it around like this. You can see me doing that in the other video. But now that it's rolled around to the top of the arm, I can now take my right hand and stick it in between these two straps, grabbing the lower of the two, and I'm just going to pull it. And you can see what happens. It takes all that slack around the back of the arm and pulls it this direction so that it gets tight. When I get it to there, I mean, it's up to you how really tight you want it, but just good and snug so that this keeper 
will swallow the dog a little bit. Now, this thing's not going anywhere throughout the whole string. In fact, you have to take it off. It will not move. Uh, the, uh, the, the keepers can't go that way. And they can't go this way because the dog is in the way plus three layers of leather are going to hold that thing there. There's a lot of friction here because of this cowhide. Um, it's going to stay put. Now, we're going to put our arm around the sling. That's why you want to wear a good glove because a good glove will give you some padding here to, to get that uh, pressure. Spread that pressure out a little bit. I'm going to come around here. Now, the length of the sling will determine where we can put our hand. Other things that affect the length of the sling. Your body geometry. How long is your arm from here to here? How long is it from here to here? Uh, and uh, the rest of how your body is put together. Uh, I recommend starting with the second or third set of holes. You might need more. You might need less. But a good, uh, but your sling tension, or your sling length is going to determine about where this hand is going to be. Naturally, you need more sling to bring the hand further back because it's got to make that angle. And a, and a shorter sling to have your hand against the upper sling swivel. So, either way is correct. But there, you know, uh, don't listen to people that say you have to hand. You have to have your hand against the sling swivel. I found that my scores are better and more accuracy if I choke back on it a little bit. This allows me a little bit longer sling that happens to be the exact same sling length that I would use in sitting. Now my hand may not be in the exact same place as sitting, but the sling length is adequate for both sitting and prone. I think you'll find that that you'll find the same thing. But, you know, most people do have a different sling length for their positions. And you know what? I'm not them. I don't know. You know, they make the decision for themselves. You know, maybe I'm just lucky. I don't need, I only need one sling length for sitting and prone uh, for the Garan or the AR-15. So, praise the Lord for that. I hope this helped you. I hope it uh, uh, give you a little clearer uh a picture of how to put this sling on and the differences of the the requirement based on where your hand is placed. Thanks for watching. I'm Greg Ficklin. Keep shooting.